Hello and welcome to episode 14 of our Jakad Yunrung campaign. In the last episode, we were able to recover the urn of our late Anne Rowong and make her into, I guess, a pet, not petrified, well, I guess a jewel petrified statue? Because uh, we brought her back from the spirit world, I suppose, and made her into one of our fancy spirit statues that we have in our special temple. Uh, so I guess now she's been properly buried in the way that she would have wanted, which is good. Uh, and now we are kind of chilling. We've expanded Hansai to get all of their cores back and have begun to annex them. We are about halfway done with that, which is pretty sweet. Um, we are working on getting our nobility and merchant guild loyalty up so we can complete this mission. So we just need to wait. And Vorkolozvar is currently digging their hold, so they will hopefully be done with that in a somewhat reasonable amount of time. Uh, we do need to take some more provinces off of Pinghoi, but we have a truce with Pinghoi until 1551, so we do still have nine years till we need to do that. As for our technologies, we are up to date on all of them, and we will be up to date on our Diplo and maybe our admin. We'll see exactly how that goes. We are over our governing capacity currently, which is bad because that does give us negative admin efficiency, which means it takes longer to annex our vassal. So we're going to spend the money that we have on governing capacity buildings just to try and bring that down. I don't want to give out any land to the estates because I need 60% crown land for this mission. After this mission, I don't really care as much. Obviously, I don't want to lose crown land if I have it, but like we, we can afford to lose a little bit. But for right now, we'll just hold on to it the best we can. Uh, one thing we need to do is prepare for war against Kebet Teleni. They are going to be our next target, mostly to try and stop the command from taking their land. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I do have a lot of things that I can core up here. I'm not going to core them. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and unstate some of this stuff. So that way we're not over our governing capacity while we're annexing. Because that is worth more to me than the autonomy in these provinces. Uh, we do have some really tough brewer. I don't really care. That is fine. We do have some Jillian Separatists, which I was kind of hoping that we had these guys set to automatically fight, but we did not. But they're next to a fort, so it doesn't matter anyways. Okay, so go ahead and make sure that you are ready to deal with these rebels. We can send... Where's our Merc stack? It's you. Okay, you stand here. Not sure what you're up to. You go up here, grab that troop, and you start drilling. We do need like 80% professionalism for a mission, so I'm actually not sure if we're going to be able to get that mission done, uh, because it also requires 80 army tradition, and our army tradition is going to be dropping very quickly. Uh, we are also, by the way, in a war, technically, with Pruikin. It is Buvari's war, so we're hoping they don't take too much, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, Whispers of Ascension. Strange tidings have arrived from a far corner of our dominion. A famed inventor, known for his keen intellect, background in mining, and love of fine wine and cheese, has turned his sights to a new field. He seems to be sowing strange, miniaturized flags, seeking to render our great banner in ever smaller replicas. Normally, we would be content to leave such strange minds to their wandering. However, strange rumors have arisen around his endeavors that they are not simply an eccentric project, but are, in fact, a quest towards some mysterious ascension. Some argue that we should allow this brilliant man his due and trust that there is a method to what may seem like madness to us lesser minds. Others point to the day of ash and skies as a grim reminder of what can happen when that logic is followed too far, and insist we intervene now before it's too late. Uh, I know this 1% tech cost is tempting, but I've only had bad things happen from this event. I don't know if anything good can happen. Uh, but you know what? Nothing venture, nothing gain. I don't... It's going to ruin one of our provinces. If it goes bad. But it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. He, would, he wouldn't he would be working so hard on it if it was going to blow up in his face, right? Surely. Uh, we were given three provinces from that war, which is pretty good. I am probably going to need to remove my... Yeah. My things there to make sure that Buvari does not get too upset with me. Let's go ahead and unstate this and this. Basically, we have to unstate all this. So that way I can actually annex my vassal in a decent amount of time uh and finally the dwarves have dug to level three 
With Virgilos of Artaken, we are presented with a unique opportunity. While we have no use for a hold, we do have use for the vast minerals of the mountain. With the help of the local dwarven clans, we shall convert Virgilos of Ar into the largest mine in all Hales. Uh, Kaodin reduces the dwarven minority size. The religion in Virgil Ozevar becomes Mystic Accord. And it gets just good business till the end of the game. Getting plus one local unrest, 15% production efficiency, and plus one local goods produced. And because they're a subject, they will convert to Mystic Accord. Sweet. Nice. Uh, now, four owned provinces with gems. Need to have a mill. Dwarven tolerance is integrated. And dig level of four. And I get my 5% fire damage received till the end of the game. Well, I like the sound of that. The command is equal amongst men. I don't like the sound of that as much. Because that means it's going to be much more difficult to take land off of them. Because we no longer have anti-monstrous. Uh, I disagree. I think they're still monstrous. Look at them. They're all hobgoblin and stuff. They have 5 corruption. Wow. That sure is something. That also means that they can get allies now. So, that's a terrifying idea. How do I feel about the Jad Empire? Mm, Jad is hostile? Why? Oh. Average elf, by the way. <laughs> Average elf desired territory. Why? Why do you desire all that territory? That's kind of crazy. It's not in his culture group. It's not in his religion group. And he doesn't have claims. I mean, eventually his mission free would give him claims, but... Average elf, that's all I have to say. That's just elf moment. Let's make sure that we are getting claims on Quebec to Lenny here. So that way we're good to go to war with them. When the time comes, we can go ahead and take tech. Which gives us a large lag spike, apparently. Okay, glad my game didn't just crash there, because I thought that was what was about to happen. Uh oh, that's not good. Gift to the state. I will take the money. Thank you. I am not going to seize land. And, ooh, I need to convert this. Oh, I agreed to convert that? Oh, that was a mistake. All right, take it out of the, take it out of the trade company. And get it converted. Uh, tolerance increase of harpies is fine. Obviously, the more tolerance we can have, the better. Uh, Nagoho, gifter of infinite life. Well, that sounds terrifying. Uh, life is indeed fragile, and in the face of the divine and spiritual, it may appear meaningless. Despite this existential truth, those in positions of power, such as mages and rulers, often seek a quote-unquote solution to their mortality. Some turn to magic, others to science, and a few venture into the realm of the unnatural. Our ruler has taken such a path, attempting to forge a pact with Nagoho, a spirit renowned in tales for bestowing immortality upon those who seek it. The ceremony was conducted with great solemnity, involving ritual chanting by shamans and the burning of incense. In the midst of this sacred atmosphere, our ruler fervently called upon the spirit to grant them immortality. The room fell into a profound silence, and abruptly, all light vanished, replaced by a faint murmuring. During this moment of uncertainty, our ruler collapsed to the ground while the shamans continued their chant. A few seconds later, through Trom regained consciousness seemingly unchanged. The true outcome of this enigmatic encounter with Nagoho remains to be seen, and only time will reveal if immortality has indeed been bestowed upon a ruler. The weight of such a decision and its potential consequences lingers in the air, enveloped in mystery and uncertainty. May they live long and prosper. There is a 25% chance that our ruler is going to become immortal. Or did we just get the lifespan? Uh, no way they're actually immortal. I don't know if it would have changed a trait or not. But I'm also not seeing a modifier here. Unless I just look past it, maybe? Maybe it's underneath our actual thing for monarch lifespan? I think it's, is it leader lifespan? Land, land, land. No, it's, it's monarch. Monarch? Monarch? M-O? Monarch? Monarch? Mm, I, I read good. I know the level of everything. It's monthly air claim. I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm just that blind. I am probably that blind. 
M.O. This is the start of M.O. I get plus nine monthly splendor? Wow. Did we actually get immortal? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But we don't have uh, a modifier. So... I guess? I I we'll find out. If she dies, well, <laughs> guess she's not immortal. It's as simple as that. Didn't I make her into a ruler? I did not. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, let's keep getting claims on Quebec Teleni whenever we can. Make sure we're on top of that. And there is our truce up with them. Let's go ahead and move our troops up to the border. Um, how are we doing on... Yeah, see, I don't want... I don't want these rebels to keep getting separatism, so... We're going to go ahead and prevent that. I also have enough governing capacity now to where I can state all this up. So, let's go ahead and do that. Don't know if I can full state it all. Uh, actually, I probably can. Uh, Wilting crops. A wretched miasma fills the air, and townsfolk are left gasping for air. The smell had come upon them all suddenly, wafting into their homes more like a thief or brigand, crashing into their rooms and filling their lungs with a wretching and unnatural gas. The ones nearest to the source, the evil house by the edge of town, have even vacated their homes in a rush, leaving behind food and valuables that have no doubt putrefied by the first hour of exposure to that sickening smell. As we speak, the smell only spreads further, poisoning crops and any livestock unfortunate enough to be exposed for a prolonged period of time. The townsfolk clamor for a solution, with one party suggesting to end this problem directly and to set our bravest off to find the source of the stink and burn it, while others want to set off a more comprehensive expedition and excise the evil without risking a great fire. Where is this? Here? Not nah, just burn it all. Yeah. Burn it all. I'm not too worried about devastation there. Okay, and let's just go ahead and declare this war right now before anybody decides to, uh... Ooh, I don't know, get ideas of also declaring war on them. I'll do a holy war just because I can. Uh, it does suck that our cannon stack is still around over there, so let's bring them over into the actual fight. And hopefully we can make this quick. Oh, uh, Buvari. Buvari. Come on, Buvari. If we if we don't ally together, the command's just going to fight you on their own. And neither of us really benefit from that. Just containing the command is kind of worth you're going to move down and fight these troops. You can walk here. I'll occupy this province. See, I'm most worried that Buvari is going to try and jump on them. They don't currently have a claim. So they shouldn't. But just because they shouldn't doesn't mean they won't get a claim and then immediately jump on them. Because, uh, you know, the AI be doing things like that. A valid thing to do. That's what I would do. But still, not very nice. I don't know if he just took a tech, but he's recovering morale. Maybe his troops just need to recover morale. It's tech 12, so I think tech 12 is a morale increase, right? Right. Nope, I'm just crazy. It's tech 15. Dang. That's a long time. That's why tech 15 is so important. Plus one morale is a pretty big difference. Pretty big difference in the grand scheme of things. And if you can do a tech 15 versus a tech 14, you are in a pretty good spot for your war. Alright. You are next. Just kidding. I don't have a siege stack here. Uh, but you are a siege stack, and you can go after their allies. And then we'll grab our other siege stack, and they will go after the other ally. And then we'll all go home happy. Well, at least I'll be happy. I don't really care about our enemies. They can be upset if they want to be upset. And I'm not sure what your plan was there, but it was a bad plan. But thank you, I suppose. Not sure just walking with your low morale army in front of my troops was a great idea. But it certainly was one of the ideas of all time. Of that, I will give you. Okay, build all of our... 
governing capacity buildings like a good EU4 player. All right, we pay the governing capacity tax for blobbing. He's fine. You go on to this siege. Now, I think I can get away with a full annexation here. The question is, is Buvari going to let me get away with a full annexation here? Or are they going to break the alliance over this? There's a pretty good chance they just immediately break the alliance. Uh, with all these favors, let's increase our trust. I think that'll be pretty well worth it. Literally all of the favors we currently have. Get our trust up. We're improving relations with them. Go ahead and maintain that. We have found another gem deposit. Took a while to get to this province. Remember, remember all of our hills should eventually have gems. Uh, so yes, I will gladly accept that. And then right before we peace out, we're also going to insult Buvari's rival, which is going to be the command, or even Lan Jinhui. Well, it's got to be the command. Yeah. Unless I've insulted them somewhat recently, I have not. Okay, that's good. And we just got to wait for these uh, sieges. There goes one. You can get pieced out now. I just want your money. Your war reps. I'm not going to pillage any capitals. End your rivalry. Call it good there. Move everybody back home. These guys can handle it on their own. Uh, how much admin is this going to cost? 346? Yeah, okay. We'll save our admin points then. Uh, the ghostly goose. Oh, no. <laughs> not the ghostly goose. Geese are generally not held in high regard in Hales, and many view their meat as subpar compared to duck or other waterfowl. These water birds are not treated well, and some even consider them pests that should be eliminated. Now, it appears that a spirit has taken up the role of avenging them, and is causing chaos in a small hamlet not far from the capital. The locals report that a goose is attacking any villager it comes across. Initially, we didn't suspect the spirit, but the fact that this goose is using farming tools and small knives as weapons has given us a different perspective. We now suspect that the goose is either a spirit itself, or that a spirit has possessed a goose and is used it to spread chaos in the hamlet. No, I'm pretty sure it's just a goose. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's literally just a goose. No spirit involved. Sounds like what they do. Um, <laughs> more important things to do than go on a wild goose chase. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being the locals and you call for aid from the government. You're like, please, please help us. We need help. There is a goose on the loose. It has knives. Okay. And it is trying to kill us all. And the government just goes, meh. Doesn't really sound like my problem. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Funny, funny, funny. Like, right, well, you should have thought about that before you started bullying the geese. You should have known that karma was going to come for you at one point or another. That's just how it works. Oh, right. I have these 13,000 troops in this island for a reason. There are rebels. Uh, we've lost our statesman. We have a new one. And we've also lost our extra diplo rep from the mages. So now we are annexing at a very pitiful rate. Uh, we don't have a lot of diplo rep. We don't have any diplo annexation buffs. So we really do just need... To spend a lot of time annexing our vassal, which kind of sucks, but it'll be well worth it in the end. All right, you can make your way home. You can get pieced out. Money trade? Eh, I don't really need it. I'm going to take it anyways. Do that. Thank you. And commit to Lenny. Let's go ahead and insult the command. Hopefully they don't declare war on me for this. That would be kind of frustrating. Declare war on you. And peace out, Kibet to Lenny now. With hopefully Rajnahaga, sorry, not, not Rajnahaga, Buvari, not getting too upset at what I'm about to do. Okay. Throw it by 20. Okay, we're good. I just, I didn't know if they were going to flip super hostile and wanting the territory or not. That's what I was worried about. But we are good. Okay, and then we can core all of what we can core. Beautiful. Uh, as for our age ability, let's go for powerful ship trade propagation. I can celebrate a festival here, which will give me 2,260 crowns. Do I want to do that? Yes, I do. And then I want to switch out of our 
current aspects and switch to a different one. Not because I necessarily need to, but I don't know, I kind of want to, just to see what else is out there. Did I lose missionaries? I did. I did lose missionaries, and unfortunately, it was one of the ones that was converting the province I needed to convert for the estates. That is rather unfortunate. Okay, you are going to hang out in Quebec to Lenny. You are going to go back up north. You are going to go home and drill. That's your job. You guys are dealing with all that. We have 3,000 ducats in the bank. I could probably build more ships, can't I? Yeah, I can. You know what? We can even build a flagship. Uh, make it a light ship. Make it for a trade power per ship and fleet. Fleet movement speed. And... Uh, I don't know... Monthly chance of Admiral skill gain. Why not? Why not? Alright, we are at 97% overextension. Great number to be at. It's below 100, so that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Uh, we are going to have some Righteous Path Rebels. But we have the men ready to jump on them when they do rise up. So that's fine. There they are. You need to make sure that you are ready to rise up and deal with the rebels in the northern part. And you can deal with the rebels in the southern part. Awesome. Make sure you have a general. And that'll be nice. How are our states looking? Nobles are getting there. Slowly. Very slowly. But I need that 65 loyalty for the mission. So we just, we hold. Uh, can't sell titles. And I can't summon the diet because we have to convert this province first. So that's what we're waiting for. I guess that means I can spend my money, though. Copper, silk, iron. And I could build on the naval supplies as well. Hmm. I could also just build some workshops. Wow, those are some very good workshops. Uh, High Bond. Is that, uh... Center of Trade? Let's see. It is. Well then, hi, Bon, and... Are you a center of trade? Yes, you are. Now, this trade node isn't great. Uh, it's a starter node, so it's not worth much. But the more I can pull out, the better. Obviously. Which means I should get these centers of trade upgraded. Uh, you'll need a point of development. There you go. Happy birthday. So, that'll come in handy. I could also lower autonomy in a bunch of provinces. I think I will. If we were closer to absolutism, I may hold off, but we're still like 50 years away. So I'd rather just make more money, deal with the rebels, and move on. Thank you. Merchants are leaving. I mean, that's not great. I don't love that the merchants are leaving, but there's not much I can do about it currently. You have 5.3. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, there we go. We can upgrade our centers of trade. Or at least one of them. Build a great palace. No, I'd rather not spend 500 ducats on that, if I'm going to be honest. Thank you, though, for the opportunity. I'm going to have to pass. That doesn't really sound in my best interest. Uh, plague. Yeah, I don't care. Sorry. Nothing we can do. Uh, Harpies over Zaram. It's like a scene from a frightening campfire story. Harpies descended upon a village in one of our provinces, attacked it, and let loose the, as it were, birds of war upon the innocent inhabitants. This is further worsened. There are already decreased standing in Chikad Yan Rung, and now the people of our country are demanding vengeance. But an argument can be made for instead focusing on repairing the affected area, or even trying to defuse tensions. So, we could either focus on the repairs, retaliating will only anger them, or send a force to a nest in retaliation, which feels... Uh, bad. And spending money feels bad. So we're just gonna gain the devastation and tell them to get over it. Sorry. Is it great that they did that? No. It's not. Do I care? No, I don't. You're like, you've barely been stated up? I do not care about your prosperity. So sorry. That's just the harsh reality of the world. I don't make the rules. Well, I do, but you know. If you were, uh, a little bit better, a little bit cooler maybe, I might consider your your plight, but you're not, so. Not my problem. I'm gonna go ahead and encourage development here, 
and we're going to put some military dev down in this state. You can also throw some down in here. Development is very cheap for us. And yeah, that gave us a casual like eight, 9,000 manpower. I don't know if that's actually true, if we're just still recovering manpower, but from the first look, Blood Song has been moved to our border. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I do want to fight these guys, but I know that if I declare war on Lun Jin Hui, it, what will happen is either the command will attack Lun Jin Hui or me. Most likely, Lun Jin Hui, but there is still a chance that they would declare war on me. I don't really want to fight them. I mean, I guess Buvari would join me in it, but that doesn't necessarily make me feel all too comfortable. Like, sure, if Buvari joins and they hire a bunch of mercenaries, that's great. If Buvari joins and doesn't, well, that's bad. It's very bad. Uh, let's build a spy network on Pruikin. Our truce with them is up in 58. So, we'll want to jump on them and take them out before Buvari can. It's very unfortunate that uh, Buvari got this province, because now it's a trading post. Which gives them more trade power in this node. Which, to be fair, I mean, I'm not really doing much with the node, but... It could eventually, that'd be nice. There's that. Where Are you protecting trade in the Binrun Coast? Yeah, that's the biggest waste of a navy I've seen in a while. We already have complete control over this node. And if we don't... It flows down to here, and I just collect it again. But I'm pretty sure... Yeah, literally zero is leaving, so there is no benefit to protecting trade there. And we'll go ahead and recruit an admiral. Unfortunately, it only has one maneuver, and I will send them to protect trade. Uh, let's go to Tianlu. That's where I think we're going to have the most value. Yeah, like barely any of this is staying. Lan Shen Hui isn't collecting here, are they? Lan Shen Hui... I mean, they are technically collecting here. Like 1.62 from the trade node. Out of this, I managed to create an income of 2.26. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't really matter. Like, their trade power compared to ours is pathetic at best. At best. And I can always do more trade company investments. Uh, skimming Stones. In Talaga Patung, a small hamlet finds itself facing a peculiar and mysterious series of events. People are being randomly struck by little pebbles, yet no one has witnessed anyone throwing them. While these attacks haven't resulted in fatalities, they have endangered, or sorry, <laughs> endangered, engendered a pervasive sense of paranoia among the local populace, disrupting their daily activities. After dismissing the possibility of mischievous children being behind these incidents, the local magistrate suspects the involvement of a taunting spirit, one that might be shapeless, skilled in concealment, or even embodied within the stones themselves. The magistrate seeks permission to gather these stones and relocate them to a secure place, hoping that this action might put an end to the attacks. No, we are not going to arrest a bunch of rocks. <laughs> the idea of that is very funny, though. Uh, we get one unrest here, throwing stone and breaking bones. We get minus 5% production efficiency for two years. We can lose 12,556 manpower to turn these stones into jailhouse rocks, or just have the locals crush or collect all the stones themselves. <laughs> All of these are very funny options. <laughs> We're not going to arrest a bunch of rocks. But it would give me a pretty good laugh if someone actually brought that. The spirits do weird things. Some of them are genuinely terrible, right? Like they're attracting people into the jungle to kill them. Or they're causing, you know, slows downs to production or to farming. But some of them are, they're, they're just trolling. And it is kind of funny. I'm with the spirits on some things. Sometimes they go a little too far and do some things that are bad, but sometimes they're just kind of funny, and I appreciate those spirits. Also, we did just get a four siege general, which is pretty sweet. Can I summon the die yet? No. We're close, though. You're very, very close. Then my nobles will be loyal, and then everything will be good in the world. Uh, we... How many level 3 centers of trade do I have? Two. So I can make some more. Having one in this node, not actually terrible. I would need to accept the Teplin culture to really get the largest benefit out of it. 
which we could do. Would I rather accept some of these cultures in the south, though? Uh, the answer is yes, I would. I'm going to accept Paru. I think we get more accepted cultures in our mission tree. I'm, I'm not sure. If not, we can just culture convert. The reason I want to do that is because if I upgrade this to a level 3, then I get 33% more local manpower. And that's reduced by having an unaccepted culture where you get the minus 33%. So it essentially just offsets it not being accepted, which is... Obviously not good if I can just get 33% more. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. We'll either accept it or we'll convert it away. Probably just accept it, in all honesty. Would be the easier option. Hello? It's a colony? But more importantly than that, it's a gold colony! <laughs> get down there, boys. Protect that province with your lives. I didn't realize we had a colony. That's going to be costing us like four ducats a month. That's not worth it. I'm not getting rid of it, though. It's gold. I'd be crazy to get rid of it. But it would be good if it, you know, kind of wasn't there. Uh, Prubican, go ahead and accept, or not accept. Claim that. Uh, we're going to just have to wait for the nobles to give to their loyalty. Oh, nope, there we go. We can now summon the diet. And... I can build a temple there. That's fine. And we can finally complete End the Estates Feuds, where we need 60% crown land, 65 nobility and merchant loyalty, and 100 government reform progress. The clergy have long been loyal to the crown, with their power having been broken after a failed attempt to create a eunuch state akin to those in Yanchen. The nobility and merchants, however, are not so loyal, often using the turmoil of succession to further their own agendas, press old rivalries, and to consolidate power. While our spies have allowed us to check their power, perhaps it is time the status quo became more to our liking. Lose 100 government reform progress, and we will no longer lose stability on our ruler's death. Which is a pretty good modifier to get as a monarchy. Uh, now, number one, get you up to level three. Number two, we need to start nerfing our estates. We need them to have a lot less influence. We need them all to be under 40 influence. Now, we can get rid of the nobility integration policy eventually. I don't want to do that right now because it's helping us annex Han Sai. The nobility aren't... Or sorry, the clergy aren't too bad. I can just get rid of oversight and they're still super loyal, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, as for the merchants... Equilibrium is 84. I really like Merchant Guild Bookkeeping. We do need to be careful, though. I'm going to get rid of that. And then, I mean, if I get rid of Supremacy over the Crown, it drops everybody's influence and loyalty. But they're all super loyal. The only downside is... Now the mages aren't super influential, which kind of sucks. Uh, let me put the Patrons of Magical Arts back on since we don't need the Crown Land as much anymore. You back up to 52, but I would like them to be at 60. So we'll let them chill a bit. Uh, but as for all of you, I mean... All I have to do is take this away and then we're good. So, not too worried about it. And let's immediately go ahead and seize land so I can get back up over 60. And you can see here, nobles, merchants need it lower than 40. Stab two. I guess actually we probably could have just done it right there, huh? Mm, no. No, we gotta wait for these diets to go away. Uh, in fact, let me look at my government reforms. What do we have? Yeah, we switched over to decentralized bureaucracy. Or at least we have it, so. I just want to make sure that we didn't have, like, expanded royal court. Royal favoritism could help, but I like the plus two maximum of cultures. Helps us out a lot. And magical elite is good for us as well. Balance of power is nice for the loyalty. Sustain discipline is fine. Yeah, that's all looking good. What do we have for our tier one? It's our special thing, which does not give any nobility influence, which is what I was worried about. Those pesky nobles always wanting more power. All right, so our truce with Ping Hoi is up in about a year, almost exactly a year. Now it is exactly one year. Well, I guess at the month. It was exactly one year. Uh, so that will be our next war. We will annex them, and then we'll finally have all the territory that we need to get from our missions. Except for, I think, this province. 
Yeah, that technically is a province we need to take, which means we do have to do a command war at some point for at least that. And I mean, since we're up here, we might as well just keep expanding, right? Who knows? But we are out of time for today. So I hope you all enjoyed. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.